Don't be discouraged. It's often the last key in the bunch that opens the lock. John Wooden. My friends, stick with this. You can do it. You just have to practice each and every day, 10 to 15 minutes. That's all we ask. You cannot rush this process. It is on-the-job training. There are no cheap little tricks. It is learning by doing. And the more you do it, the more you learn, the better you get. And don't worry about how long it takes because once you master these charts, you will make up for all the time you ever spent. Remember, it's not so much about getting things right every single time. You can't do that. The market is too dynamic. If that were the case, you would have machines that did it. There would be no reason to train. It would all be one big computer algorithm, but it doesn't work because there are literally billions of components, the millions upon millions of trades, all the effects of everything from the weather to wars to just quirky little things that can happen in the marketplace. So what do we do to increase our chances of winning? Well, we follow the charts as accurately as they can and we manage our losses. In other words, we minimize those and we maximize our gains. How do we do that? Well, we teach it all the time. We use the average true range on our two-day chart right down here. When we have valid, viable weekly vertical crossovers where we see high volume on the interim, say on this chart, bottom, and then we have a nice high volume crossover from red to green or green to red. This is from red to green going up. We then enter that trade. We ride that trade up. We sell half our position at one average true range. And then we let the rest of it ride until the market tells us to get out or until we've set maybe two ATRs for sufficient profit. Or you can sell everything at one ATR. But again, we do this for a number of reasons that we explain in various trainings. If you're not signed up and aren't getting our trainings, then you really probably will have a hard time figuring this out on your own. That's why we do all this for free. Sign up at chartingwealth.com. We'll, each and every day, you'll get a great training that you will learn from. We encourage you to practice with us and you will figure this out. Don't get overly rushed. It will take some time. It comes in time. You will understand. So listen, participate, practice trade, enjoy. This is supposed to be fun. I love it so much. I do it every day and I share my thoughts with you each and every day in addition to my own trading. So again, enjoy. This is, this is, this is one of the real joys of my life is the market. I am fascinated by it and I engage in it every single day, and so should you, because it is worth your time, energy, and effort. Now, let's see what's going on. Stocks are mixed, bonds are up, gold and Bitcoin down. Let's look at where we are on the S&P 500. We are still long as we end the week. We have reached a higher high this week, the high all the way up to 524.11. When did that happen? Well, if we look down at the half-day chart, the intraday chart, we can see it happened Thursday morning. Things were a little lackluster as we were moving along. Then Wednesday afternoon popped up and Thursday morning jammed up. Down a little bit for the day on Friday, 0.19%, but we ended the week up. And with look at that, average volume on the weekly chart. <clears throat> so we are still long. We've stayed long. It has been beautiful. Of course, we crossed over going up all the way back at the beginning, I'm sorry, end of October. Uh, we, we saw things go from red to green. I was just showing you that. Then we had things pull back right at the beginning of the year, but then crossed right back over going up, and it has just continued to peg up ever since, slowing down some uh, this week and last week, but then moving up again. It's beautiful. Let's look at where we were on the S and from the S&P 500 to the NASDAQ 100. It was up. 0.11%. And guess what we did this week? We hit a higher high after really dropping through this prior trend line. Now, this isn't much of a trend line. It is awfully darn flat. I don't like them this flat. It's not really that helpful. Uh, but we saw where things had moved up. We've seen this happen here recently. 
Back on the 20th of February, the week starting there, we had a spinning top. Last week, we had a doji. This week, we have a green spinning top. We actually had a green spinning top. You can see a little bitty wick on the bottom right here. On the week beginning the 4th of March, I need to move all these dashes away so you can barely see it there. Then the next week, a doji. Then this week, things finally took off. You can see where that happened again. Started on Wednesday afternoon and then Thursday morning, jamming up. It's pulled back some since then. But again, we are still long on the NASDAQ 100. Now, where are we, are we with 20-year bonds? Up for the day, almost a percent, 0.96 percent. You can see where it jammed up in the morning. Pulled back some in the afternoon after languishing down here on these lows. We don't know where this chart is. I'll be the first to tell you. I've told you this for weeks now. We saw things jam up with no volume, then roll over with average volume. It kept it up for a while, but then we had a peak volume uh, with an up move and a spinning top with lots of a big wick on top and then down for three weeks and then up for two weeks and then a doji and then this week down. This is not the kind of chart you trade. We're waiting for some pattern to be established that we can follow. You can see we haven't had, haven't had average volume for seven weeks now. What does that mean to us? It doesn't mean anything to us as far as trading goes because we can't discern any interest in the market. So we are ambivalent at this point on 20-year bonds. We are just waiting for something to happen. And again, that's the way you ought to be willing to be on any chart that you can't read, period. Now let's talk about where we are with gold. Gold, again, didn't give us any kind of discernible turn in trend. Again, it got sloppy too. Popped up there at the end of the year and then sort of sideways at the beginning and then down. It looks a lot like bonds there, doesn't it? Until it jammed up. And it jammed up in one week, hitting a high. That was the week beginning the 4th of March. A high of what? 203.30. The next week, 202.41. This week, 203.92. So it went a little bit higher with decent volume, but again, hard, hard to find much to follow. Uh, you, you could try to Monday morning quarterback this into, oh, we had an interim low, not quite average volume, almost, and then sliding sideways up to average volume and then took off. I mean, again, what do we like? We like charts like this one right here where we saw gold come down, hit a bottom, high volume. Let me, I hate this right here in the middle. Got to move it to the side a little away from all these uh, symbols. But we can see here, and in fact, you can see where things came and hit an interim low with high volume. And then we got that telltale spinning, green spinning top with high volume, and it took off and actually moved up for four weeks. That was nice. That's the kind of turnaround that we like to see. Here, hard to discern much. Now, it did blow through. We did have the purple line up here for quite a while for you. There was a ceiling. In fact, let's move the purple line up. This is where it originally was because we had a ceiling at several points right here. We did blow through that. Now, you could have tried to use that as some kind of symbol with that rising volume that you could jump in. Only problem is if you did and you bought at the high, you just now surpassed it by uh, a few cents two weeks later. Not the kind of thing you want to hold on to. Uh, so again, gold isn't helping us much either, just like bonds. Now, let's talk about where we are on Bitcoin. Bitcoin has had a pullback week after three strong weeks of up movement, ending last week, of course, with the high of $83.36. Now, this is the Bitcoin ETF, the Vanek Bitcoin Trust, HODL. It replaced XBTF that we tracked for years for you. We have seen now that we have had three, well, it's really two and a half because this is the first day of the latest two-day candle, five days of down movement on Bitcoin. A pullback today right, well, at the end of the market of 2%. Again, 
you know, waiting for more of a signal. Now let's move to the 24 hour day Bitcoin chart because we don't have volume here on this new chart, HODL, which came out just a few weeks ago. We can see where volume is here, average volume. We are above it for the day, 24 hour day Bitcoin symbol. It, it tracks fairly similar to the ETF. Remember, regular Bitcoin trades 24 hours a day. If it's an ETF, it only trades during market hours. But again, what's beautiful about it is that you can buy and sell it like a stock on the stock exchange. You know, you can, if, if you've just got an online account you want to practice trade on, you can practice trade on that account with HODL. Now, we're not a stock calling service. We're darn sure not a bit calling or gold uh, calling service. We're an education firm. We want you to practice trade with us. We're not giving you market advice for you to go out and spend your money on. You don't pay us for that. We don't. We don't give that kind of advice. We want you to practice trade with us to learn if you can actually do this and to learn the ins and outs and the risks. And Bitcoin is risky as hell. I mean, my gosh, we've seen it go from, what, 50 to 20? And, and I mean, you can just go back. You can look at this exact chart and go back in time and see all of the machinations of Bitcoin. So, what do we do? We practice trade it. What do we see going on right now? Big pullback. You know, after on the 24 hour a day Bitcoin chart, of course, we saw where Bitcoin hit its high. It did that at, check it out, $73,794. Where did it close the week? Well, the Bitcoin, clo the Heikinashi close at $60,000. So from, from 73 dollars to 68, there it is, 68, I was looking at the low. But yeah, the low, it went from a high of 73,794 to a low of 60,760. Now, this says it ended the week at 65. Um, it, well, it's 65,231 right now. So again, we will pay attention to this. We do have this pullback underway. Does it mean Bitcoin stopping? No. It can mean it's just digesting those gains and getting ready to get riled up again. So we'll keep an eye on the two day and on the half day. And of course, where do things take off? Well, they take off first on the half. Well, this is the 195 minute chart because it's 24 hour a day. Bitcoin uh, on a regular chart with the ETF, it's a half day. That's actually a half day is 195 minutes. It's not four hours because the market's not open eight hours. But we'll see the change if it does determine to move up, it'll move up first. Of course, on the half day, that will 195 minute chart, that will drag over the two day at some point. And then of course, you will see it being reflected on the weekly. So we'll keep our eye on Bitcoin. We are cautious now with this great pullback after all those weeks of up movement. Will it resume or will it pull back and get bloody for a while? Next week we'll tell. My friends, we always love to hear from you. CW at chartingwealth.com. If you have questions, problems, concerns, you need special trainings, let us know. We'll try to put that together for you. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.